You're selling the bullets to both sides of the war instead of <laughs> right. fighting fighting for the price to do the, the detail, right? Let them mm -hmm. kill each other over $150 detail. Detailers Roadmap Cruise Control, where we navigate the roadways of life, business, and everything in between. Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from the Cruise Control Podcast. I'm here with my friend Matt Kelly today. Uh, I'll give you his bio and a little bit more information before we get started. Don't forget that we do awesome websites, we do awesome SEO, and we're just an awesome company all, all around. So go to detailersroadmap.com, use that little book of demo button up there, uh, and we can kind of walk through what you've got now, whether it's nothing or a site, we can walk through that with your SEO, take care of things and get you started on an awesome website that's super conversion uh, oriented. So, hey, Matt is the owner of Hydrosilex and Detailing World. Detailing World is amazing. It currently has 15 locations and is adding new ones all the time. He's also a cryptocurrency uh, investor and stock investor. And something I didn't know until you sent me this, I didn't know you were a drummer. I'm a oh, guitarist. Yeah. And, and Are we, you? And, yeah. And, well, and guitarists naturally don't trust drummers. Uh, <laughs> I don't trust anybody that can control all four appendages oh, independently. Bro. Yeah. It's, uh, can I tell you something? It's not something you're born with, bro. I look like a it. retard my first year for sure. But yeah, that's awesome. But hey, um, the 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 first thing I always ask about on guests is uh, on cruise control is give me that superhero backstory, right? Like you're one of those guys, and you know we've known each other for a while. We're not super close, but we've interacted a ton over the years, and I think we know each other fairly well. I think you're one of those guys in the industry that has made a huge impact on the industry, but a lot of people don't really know the impact mm -hmm. that you've had. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully we can bring some of that out today and kind of share your knowledge. Um, this whole franchise thing is super cool and super innovative uh, in the industry. So I want to talk about that. Uh, but give me kind of the backstory and go far back as you want. I'm interested. Uh, you're younger than me. But you're not 25, so you obviously had a, a world before, you know, the detailing world. Um, so run through all that backstory for me and go as deep and long as you want. Well, first, shout out to Coach Kemi for making this nice little batch of whiskey here that's going to <laughs> allow me to talk to talk about myself, Kevin. Um, one of the reasons that you probably haven't heard much about me is because I'm not really the braggadocious type. Like any posts that I do are more related to my my customers or the business or, you know, whatever it is, but it's never really about like me. I try not to at least, but yeah, I've been in this game for a long time, dude. Um, huh, where do I want to start? So I guess the, the, what got me into detailing was back when I was maybe 16 years old. Um, so yeah, it's been a long time in the industry. Now uh, I learned how to buff cars at a Mannheim auto auction, which, <laughs> uh, you know, rotary burned some paint in my life. But, um, you know, I really took an interest in it. You know, like I think most of us that are still here uh, after all these years, we just are passionate about that, making things shiny. Right. And so that kind of was my beginnings. And from there, um, I led into opening my own business, which uh, I, I have a funny story about that. Um, my company, which this is a throwback, dude. This is Autobionics. This is the very first detailing business I own. This was my service company. Initially, it became a distribution company. Later, now it's retired, but I still love the brand. Um, but I so had that just company. means you've you've been this huge since you ran that company because that shirt fits pretty awesome still. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Things don't change, dude. I mean, same regimen, same regimen. But uh, we uh, we started this. I, I started this company uh, a long time ago. I don't even think I can remember when it was that long ago. Um, but it was a service-based company. We just did standard detailing, paint correction and wax, right? I think at that time, sealants were becoming popular. Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, I, one of my buddies owned a pizza shop and he, uh, he hit me up and he was like, hey man, you know, the pizza shop wants to uh, offer you the opportunity to advertise on our pizza box. And so I'm like, that sounds cool, man. I'll get in front of a lot of homeowners and potentially find some customers. And so I put together a, you know, a little bait and uh, it was a $99 express detail. You know, we just wiped the car down, basically a quick vacuum in and out. Right. But even back then, 99 bucks was decent. Yeah, um, that's good. So that being said, I, we launched the campaign and next thing you know, uh, 
you remember a, a group called Detailer Buddies? Oh it's yeah, probably still around. Yeah, it's it's still there. Yeah, one of the most toxic groups I've ever come in contact <laughs> with. Yeah, dude. sorry, sorry, you could hear the disdain in my voice. If oh, anybody for sure. loves detail, detailer buddies, detail. <laughs> the, you know, anyone that loves uh, that you, group, you, there's you, something wrong with you. <laughs> but um, I, I'll be more Switzerland and say you do you. <laughs> you do well. Matt Kelly tells it how it is, bro. But I'll tell you that group. Uh, back then I was in it, and you know, at peace with the people in there. And all of a sudden, I see this this guy named Barry Thiel do a post <laughs> in the group that said this mf -er just uh, giving away details for $99 and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, different perspectives. He doesn't understand that that's my hook to get you in. And then I upsell you because no one's working for $99 a car. Um, but I was really distraught by it because he didn't know who I was at that time, but he was in my direct market. And so I'm not a Facebook guy. I'm not an internet guy. I went, I went to his business. I literally mm. showed up at Barry Thiel's business, presidential details back then, back then shout out Barry. And, um, I knocked on the door and someone said, just come in. And so I opened the door and it was right to Barry's chair. It was like, <laughs> he was right, right there, man. And I'm like, okay, this is a very quick introduction. He turned around like, who are you? And I'm like, Hey man, you know, I just, I'm Matt Kelly, by the way, and I could see his face change like, oh, shit, I remember this guy, the post I made, what's going to happen now? And I was like, look, man, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm, I think you misinterpreted what I'm trying to do here, blah, 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 explain the story. And we immediately became friends, immediately. It was like instantaneously, we sat and probably talked for a couple hours and uh, became instant friends. But that was kind of the beginning of um, the whole empire, we'll call it started off with detailing. And so at that point, um, you know, I got into ceramic coatings. Okay. And this happened when I lived in Florida. At this point, I had moved out of Pennsylvania down to Florida just to kind of live my younger years, man. Like mm -hmm. I was just trying to feel out the world, get some culture and all this stuff. And uh, so I moved to Florida and Fort Lauderdale to be exact, and kind of got into boat detailing and all this other stuff as well. Marine stuff was a big part of that area. And at that point, me and my brother were just kind of sitting at, at home one day. Sean Kelly, by the way, who also mm -hmm. owns a company called DNA Surface Concepts. So he's kind of doing his own thing there. But we sat home one day. It was raining. We couldn't work. And we're like, what can we do to kind of set ourselves apart from the rest of the world? Right. Because down there, there was a lot of competition with people that didn't have legitimate businesses, weren't paying taxes, had no overhead. And here we were running a really, you know, blue collar business. Um, but by the books. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we got on YouTube and we're just messing around, like looking up different waxes and stuff like that. And all of a sudden we got served this video suggestion uh, from G Technic. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was the Lotus flower video, which mm -hmm. is famous because mm -hmm. that was what started G Technic. And so we watched this probably like 50 times, man. And just the whole like water rolling off the surface and at that time no one ever saw anything like that so we were just blown away with what this product could do and so we were like let's get some right we're going to be the first people here to get some because we looked at g technic in the states that didn't exist mm -hmm. so immediately we went to their website um we ordered a bottle we got our bottle we used it on our first customer and when we did that first like demonstration you know not to mention the minute you lay it on, the shine was different. It wasn't mm -hmm. like any wax or anything. Was but that C1? Minute, yeah, bro. C, yeah. They didn't even have XO back then. It was no, just, that was C, it was, that's C1, yeah, which is still, yeah, it they was, still make it. That stuff's oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I sell it in detailing world. <laughs> but it was, it was C1, and that was it. There was nothing else for the car. They didn't have wheel armor back then or any of that stuff. And so we put it on. We washed the customer's car for the first time, you know, maybe a week later. And we were just like, this is it. Like we just mm. found it. This is what's going to set us apart. We have some new technology. Um, we're like pretty much the first people that I knew that had this product. And so we just started buying tons of it because our customers were loving it. We were putting it on boats, knowing that mm -hmm. we didn't know it was going to fail down the road because it wasn't a boat coating. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it at least got a good year in where our customers mm -hmm. like, well, that was better than wax. Um, but we started selling so much of it um that you know we kind of made waves over at g technic uk and so by that point um sean and i went separate ways i moved back to pennsylvania just because 
you know, when you live that far from your family, it's very hard for them to come down and visit you. So they're getting yeah. older, I'm getting older, older, and we just didn't have a relationship the way I wanted to. So I actually parted ways, went back to PA and opened up Autobionics and obviously brought that technology here to use in that business. And so I started putting it on customers' cars. It went viral. Um, I used uh, several different marketing things. Back then, Groupon was like the shit because mm -hmm. it would bring people <laughs> to your business and you could upsell them. Um, so we did that and I'm selling coatings on, on those people. And uh, it went pretty viral to the point where Rob Earl actually got my contact information, reached out and said, hey, man, I don't know what you're doing over there to, to like, are you reselling this or what's going on? Why are you guys buying so much? And I'm like, I'm just mm -hmm. using it in my own business, but my customers love it. I love it. And he's like, man, would you be interested in teaching other people how to do what you do? And I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Let's talk more on this. He couldn't afford to pay me at the time as a salary customer, you know, a salary employee. So he had to figure out a different way. So he threw distributorship at me and he was like, mm. look, everything you sell, you're going to get a cut of and you can teach people how to install it and talk about it, whatever you got to do. And let's do that. So out of my little detailing facility, I had a glass case and I had local detailers buying it. The Internet wasn't so like connecting people back then. It was like forums and stuff, which I did use a little bit of that, but. Back then, I think we only had Auto Geek forums, and unless yeah. they sold the product, Autotopia, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Palm Beach Motoring was like, "Hey, if we don't sell that product, you ain't talking about it in the group," and they would like <laughs> block you, ban you, remove the post. So I, I just had to find out other ways to get to customers outside of my state. And um, eventually, Rob Earl then hit me up, and I'll never forget. I was sitting. Um, I was sitting at my shop. I got the call. It was late at night. And cause you know, we were at different time zones and he was like, Hey man, I found someone to basically bankroll G Technic coming to the U S but mm. I only allowed them the opportunity on one condition. They had to hire Matt Kelly because you're the only one in the States that has done enough of these codings to talk about it and to teach people how to use it. Right. So I'm like, all right, this sounds really cool. So they were like, when can you meet them? They're from Connecticut, right? And I'm like, well, I got a job. I'm going to be on the road for like two weeks. Uh, people used to just kind of have me come out, spend a, a mm -hmm. week and just coat stuff, right? I would just spend days coating stuff, stay in a hotel. And um, they met me out at one of my customer's facilities. And we were, uh, I was actually coating big rigs back then. $3,800 a pop, dude. That was sick money back then. It still is. <laughs> just for wiping it on and wiping yeah, it off. Bro. <laughs> Crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, and so next thing you know, these three guys come up, man, stuffy dudes, like Ty coming in a dirty garage. They definitely look like they didn't belong there. And one of them was like the, uh, one of the main guys at Gap, uh, you know, the clothing company, mm -hmm. a Chase Bank executive, an insurance guy. So like, you know, those types. And here I am, just this detailer buffing away, dirty as hell. <laughs> so they, they're like, hey, you got a second to talk. And we worked out some deals and to the point where it was like, here's my number because I had to close my business, right? They wanted me to mm -hmm. move to Connecticut from Pennsylvania. And they hit my number, man. And at that age, it was like, wow, this is the most money I've ever made in my life. Like, let's get this. So we opened up Wilton Manor's location. I don't know if you were around at that time. With that, No, that was a little before my time. Right. So we're talking like 2011 was mm -hmm. when I started working for G Technic and I literally helped them build from scratch. They had nothing. So we built the garage. I hired Chris Larson, who back in the day, and he still is still the goat. Um, just yeah. maybe not so much on the on the social media as much as before. Yeah, he's but, another guy that I don't think people realize the skill set that exists oh, in bro, that man. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, because he used to be more active, but as it turns out, when you're earning a living and doing the stuff uh, that he yeah. does, you don't have time yeah. to be on the internet, right? Uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I hired Chris Larson, who was like wet sanding million dollar cars. Mm -hmm. So he was the goat, and. Um, then I hired Kevin A. Walt later in life. Uh, I think we were about a year in before I, we needed help. And so I was the main sales guy. Uh, my very first onboard for G Technic was Claude Harris. Really? I yeah. love Claude. Claude's one of my boys. I love Claude. How can Harris, you not man? love Claude? He, he is right. OG. Yeah. Um, but he was the very first person that I onboarded as a G Technic installer. You know, he paid the, the, paid the dues, got a little bit of training. 
and went to work, man. And that really propelled his business, you know, because he was one of the first mm -hmm. people doing coatings back then. Yeah. And so we built this network, gigantic. Um, I hired Kevin. He kind of was my secondary salesman, right? I started teaching him how to sell this stuff. And, you know, all the while we're kind of looking on the horizon of who our competition was. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, you had uh, CarPro, which uh, was C-Quartz back then. You know, that's what mm -hmm. they did. And then another one called A-Quartz. And then you had Ceramic Pro, mm -hmm. right? And Ceramic Pro had this really catchy marketing. Lighting mm -hmm. cars on fire, cracking <laughs> stuff with hard objects. Hitting them with like poly pipe and stuff whatever like that. It was, yeah. bro. <laughs> Just, but that grabbed my attention. I'm like, ooh, good, guys, we're going to have a problem here if these guys, you know, uh, hit the U.S. And so my, my team was like, they're never going to come to the U.S. They're in Russia. It's they're you know, third world. Like just they never took them uh, serious. Mm. And so, um, you know, things happened in the G Technic North America thing. I'm not going to get into, but I did end up I chose to resign. It was kind of my decision to get out of that. I could kind of read the tea leaves. And so at that point, I did. Yeah, there was a, a little little there was a little stutter in the in the path of g technic yeah. in the u.s we'll, we'll yeah. just say that they, they did just recover, say but. it was uh <laughs> the ownership it wasn't g technic it wasn't manufacturing yeah. it was just the u.s ownership yeah um they just didn't really understand the market i don't think their mm -hmm. main slogan was wax your back not your car <laughs> yeah because that really touches a man you know like i, I wax my I back all the time i don't know about you I, kev I love um that. So anyways, that's just, you know, they're, they're coming from a whole nother world and yeah. just bringing the softer side, uh, just didn't hit hard. Yeah. But anyways, um, that being said, I had a non-compete. So at that point here I am living in a foreign land with no work. Cause I, I chose to make a good decision. It was the best decision I did. If, if I stuck with them, they would have imploded my brand. And mm. so anyways, I was like, what am I going to do? Well, I fell back on what I know, which is detailing. Tried to open up a business in Connecticut and got completely blindside robbed by the partner that I, I chose. It was actually mm. a G Technic installer and he took everything from me. So here I am at that point in time, I had a, uh, an expensive rent, right? Cause I had money coming in and now I don't. So you, yeah. you're not keeping the lifestyle. Uh, I'll never forget that winter dude. And I had two dogs that winter, my oil ran out and I didn't have enough to fill the, the oil tank. So I literally had to like open stoves and light candles oh. to stay warm. Rock bottom, bro. Like if you haven't hit that, then you can never appreciate where you're at. So 100%. Yeah. That, that went on for just a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? I have to get out of Connecticut. I need to go back to where I know people so that I can build, rebuild myself. Mm -hmm. And so I moved back to Pennsylvania at, in winter time. And then at that point, um, I started reaching out to a couple other coding brands to at least get the pieces lined up for when my non-compete was over. So the first person mm -hmm. I reached out to was Modesta. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, Modesta was super hot and they had a great product. And so I was like, that's who I want to work with. And I also reached out to Ceramic. Yeah, bidding. They were bidding on, on me at that point because I they knew G-Technic. They saw what happened in the U.S. We Within six months, I was bringing in $1.2 million in revenue, dude, for that company. Nice. It was huge. And why not? It was like the first technology in the U.S. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so these guys were kind of you know going back and forth. And I was more so interviewing them because I had already been in a traumatic situation. And so I didn't want to work with another company that was going to put me in that situation. So I ended up choosing uh, Peter. That was mm -hmm. my decision. And again, same situation. Hey, we're new. I don't have any money to pay you that salary that G Technic was paying you. So you're going to be a distributor, right? And he gave me a margin and I'm like, well, let's go. Let's do this again. And so at that point, man, I literally was working from home, setting up installers, doing trainings on locations and stuff like that. And just began that process of building Ceramic Pro. And mm. I, I had the vengeance for G Technic because of what I went through. <laughs> Nothing personal right. to Rob Earl. Yeah. Him and no, I are good not, friends not again. Yeah. 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 Him and I made up many years ago and we're good. But I think he understood what I went through and, and was like, yeah, I get it. But uh, I had a vengeance and it was like, I'm going to take all of G Technic's guys that I brought on and convert them. And it was an easy conversion. Why? Mm. Because of the lighting, the cars on fire and the, the lighters hit in the car, right? Yeah. Marketing was better, 
right? Marketing was what Ceramic Pro was built on. The product was great too, but marketing is everything. Well, that's Peter's background, right? I don't think a lot of people know that Peter's background no. is marketing, correct? Isn't it? Or what, really, where, what's his background? He used to sell radon detectors. He'll tell you oh, he was really? a scam okay. artist in his first in his first first business. <laughs> he was a scam artist because you radon you can't even really detect it, but they were selling these things. So, anyways, uh, he got into more legitimate businesses. Then love him to death. Mm. Great friend of mine. Um, but yeah, so I, I went to work with him, and here he was on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast, and we we each were doing our own distribution. And at that point, you know, we kind of uh, brought on other team members. Adam Cote, who took a moment to mm -hmm. get in, in bed with us because he was tied up with Expel, I believe, at the time. And, you know, who's Ceramic Pro? Why would I change my name, right? And so we finally built a team that was, I consider the all-star team, at least that in that segment of life. I don't know what it is now. But yeah. at that point in time, I would say that Ceramic Pro is definitely the all-star team. And just laid the red carpet out for every other coding brand because we were bringing awareness to the industry to the yeah. consumers that, hey, look, this technology exists, buy it from wherever. I mean, that wasn't our choice. We wanted you to buy it from us, but other people would use that to get their brand sold. I'll never forget when I went to SEMA many years ago, probably seven or eight years ago. And I went, I had Peter with me and we were with Jim Thomas and we went over to Corey Carruth's booth, uh, mm -hmm. CarPro. And everyone thought there Corey, was going to be this. Corey was a little bit. Corey was a little bit bigger seven or eight years ago, by the way, and probably had a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were indoors, but yeah, I would agree. Definitely chain smoker. But we, uh, we, we. It was like a meeting of the heads of these top coding companies, and someone snagged the picture. Like, oh my god, I can't believe they're all together right now. They thought we were like arguing or fighting, but we were just like, hey, we're living life right now, man, mm -hmm. making money. And Corey actually thanked Sir Peter and I, and he's like, you know, most people think that I should be mad at you because you guys are crushing the market, but my my car pro sales have gone up at least three hundred percent since you guys started, you know, marketing this stuff. I'm like riding yeah. the coattails. So it it really laid the red carpet out and helped the industry in a whole, helped the the uh, detailers start selling this stuff. Um, instead of yeah, I don't having I don't think I and I've given credit to CP multiple times, right? Like mm -hmm. I don't think people really understand what ceramic pro and i was one to make fun of the lighters and the poly yeah, pipe and yeah, setting yeah. crap on fire and all that kind yeah. of stuff however the you know the reason we as marketers do crap like that is because it gets attention i, I don't i, I am a hundred percent convinced had you guys not done all of those things and driven that market yeah. where would we we'd be? still be four or five years Could probably be. behind that Could i be. mean there's no way to predict but sure. CP, you guys laid the foundation, just like mm -hmm. you said, is like a red carpet for everybody else because the consumers began to say, hey, I want this thing. Like, what yeah, is this yeah, thing? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, that created the whole downhill thing because, you know, that snowball effect, because once you have, you know, a thousand people a month with a coating on their car, they start talking and mm -hmm. telling other people. Next thing you know, you got this vibrant network of word of mouth that just really opened up the ceramic market. And we all made a ton of money, man. Like those, it's still the good days, but those were the good days, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for sure with a new product and all that. And some of us guys that were smart with our money used it and invested into other things. Me being one of those people, mm -hmm. I immediately opened up a, a service center. That was one of the, the largest, most um, forward thinking design Right. Like you see all I never did the hex light thing. I think that's kind of dumb, to be honest. Um, I don't but, know. I mean, honestly, yeah. you know, G-Technic, who I have an affinity for, clearly, because I work mm -hmm. for them. I like the hexagons, but I don't get the hex light thing because it's got a. And I haven't polished a car under those before, but I can't imagine that actually makes it easier no, to see the defects. Right. No, there's so. too many dead spots in the center of the lights. There's no light mm -hmm. in the, the middle of the honeycomb. But anyways, um, you know, we create a really cool um, service center with I had a bar in there. Uh, we had the metallic floors. We had, you know, a waterfall in the shop. Like we just went all out to show that, look, we're not detailers. Like, don't even call me that. I take disrespect in you calling me a, a detailer. We're mm. more of like a protection specialist or whatever right. word we want to call ourselves. But we're different. Right. We're, we're charging a thousand bucks a car. Right. And back then, you know, that was us getting into that momentum going from 150 
to $500 for a full coating. That's what I was charging in 2011, 2012, 500 bucks for a full car. And that was hard. That was real hard to get people to appreciate, you know, why, especially the first 10 customers, because they were the guinea pigs, right? Um, Michael Abens was very, mm -hmm. my very first customer that I ever coded. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever is, and I, and I see you're like, oh, Mike Abens and Matt Kelly, we're good. The fact is, is that this guy was there for me in the very beginning um, where I was getting my shop off the ground. Somehow he found me. I think it was it was on a forum. I got on a TTRS forum and posted pictures of this coding and how it worked, videos and pictures. And he hit me up and he did a YouTube video of him washing the car for the first time, giggling like a little girl, like, oh, my God, the car can't even get the car's not even getting wet. And uh, he sold me so many coatings because of that video that it was just insane. I knew we had something there. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of firsts, man. And so at that point, um, you know, we, we created the, the service center and that killed it, got into the tent and PPF and all that stuff too. And then from there, um, you know, I was doing a ton of trainings for Ceramic Pro. And it's like, I'm talking about, all right, here's all the prep products. And then mm -hmm. here's the coding. I can sell you the coding, but all the other prep products, you're going to have to go here, 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 and there. And I'm sending money away from my business, from me. And I'm like, why don't I just start selling these things that I am talking about all the time? And so I created uh, Detailing World. And Detailing mm. World just initially started off as, let's, let me open one local store, right? It was a 3,600 square foot retail, uh, retail store. And, you know, we had maybe about 80 different SKUs. It was very small at the time. And people came in and they were just like, man, this is so cool that finally we have all the brands that we see on the Internet right here in our backyard. And we can try them and see them uh, without having a, you know, we can ask questions more importantly. Mm -hmm. And so it took off, man. It took off real fast. And I would say within our second year after the proof of concept, some of my CP buddies, uh, the installers, the ones that were doing like a million dollars a year, were like, hey, man, I see what you're doing. You're selling the bullets to both sides of the war instead <laughs> right. of fighting, fighting for the price to do the, the detail, right? Let mm -hmm. them kill each other over 100. I'm going to sell the products to both of you guys. Mm -hmm. And so I had my very first guy, Larry Piotr. Um, he's a CP elite guy out in New Jersey. Was mm -hmm. like, dude, I want to open one of these. And so I'm like, man, I never even thought about opening a second location. Let me figure out how this works, what I need to charge you, how it's going to work. And so we came to an agreement and he opened his very first store in a, a, a strip mall. And we did the grand opening and it was killer, man. And I'm like, wow, it worked. Our second location absolutely worked. Where's the third one? And so we just started going, going, going. And then I would say the first like eight stores were all Ceramic Pro installers because mm. we were in a tight knit and they were like, oh, you guys are making money in a different way. How do I get in on this? So, And did um, you do franchise agreement and all that kind of stuff at that? Did you go through that whole process? So I did a lot of research on fr franchising and I'm not a big fan of it. And the reason being mm. is that on average, a franchisor is going to take about 7% a month of your gross, your gross sales, not your profit, yeah. your gross right. sales. Yeah. And at that point, it's like, okay, if I'm in the seat of a franchisee and I'm paying my franchisor 7%, what are you doing for me, man? It's like, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got your name on my building, but what else are you doing for me to earn that money? And so there's a big weight on the shoulders of the franchisor to provide marketing and some of the other things, right? And I'm like, we're still going to do that, but I'm not going to eat your margins. I'm just going to make a little bit off the top when I see This episode is brought to you by Detailers Roadmap. Hey, spoiler alert, that's us. We all know you need a kick-ass website in order to be successful with your business. The good news is at Detailers Roadmap, kick-ass websites, that's kind of what we do. With the latest performance, designs, and SEO strategies, Detailers Roadmap is your one-stop shop to be successful on the web. And don't forget, we have the best support team in the industry. Whether you're an existing partner looking to improve your lead generation or you need a brand new website, Detailers Roadmap is here to help you be successful on the web. So go to detailersroadmap.com forward slash success and get started today. That's detailersroadmap.com forward slash S-U-C-C-E-S-S. -S. Oh, right, so I get like it. Our, okay, cool. Yeah, so we're just like, think of us like a master distributor for all of these brands, right? Mm. And our margin with them is so negotiated, like, 
some of these brands, we have the deepest margin that they've ever given anyone because of our buying power, right. which allows me to take a little and still allow a lion's share to the store, right? Average right. about 50, 50%, 40, 50%. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that allows them to, you know, have a legitimate business and make money. And so we've done that. And now we're at 15 locations. Um, we got something really freaking cool that's working in the background that I am not allowed to talk about. Uh, but when it hits, people are going to be like, oh gosh, like this is, this is the dynamic duo, you know, doing their thing. So there's about to be a, a, a I don't want to call it a merger, but there's going to be something that happens with detailing world with a, a big known name that is going to take detailing world to the next level. Awesome. Um, we're, we're looking at hundreds of stores, man. Like there needs to be a detailing world in every market. Um, and even then it's like, I, I, I think that the, the manufacturers are finally understanding that they've always wanted to be in a box store What? but what do you got? Walmart, advanced auto O'Reilly's. And when you go in there, dude, Hey, you lose 70% of your margin. Yeah, and they're but a pain in the ass with they're buyback pain in the ass. and all, you know, pay, pay, taking 360 days to pay. And, you know, it's, oh, that's yeah, the it's, other not, thing. it's yeah. not fun. Yeah, no, cash flow sucks with those guys. But then they also don't even know how to sell your product. They just throw it on the shelf, right? Right. So there's a lot of brands that would love to be in that high volume box store, but in a better scenario, a better setting. And so I created that. I created mm -hmm. now a box store for these brands to be showcased in every major market to be able to have customers come in and touch and feel and try the products. I don't know if you've ever seen the inside of a detailing world, but we have Yeah, I three... went to one in North, in North Carolina. And oh, the, you went the, to that one? Yeah, remember? Hell I was yeah. going to shoot I was oh, going to shoot no some shit, video. Dude. I knew yeah, that. I shot, I'm sorry. I dude. Shot, yeah, no, you're good. I shot some video, but what was funny mm -hmm. and this and it's this is the irony of this service, right? Like I went in there, I was on kind of a short timeline cuz I had to I had to be somewhere else. That's right. But, I remember. But there was there were two detailers in there and the owner like after 25 minutes of him one of the buyers talking right? talking yeah. to them, right? Like yeah. I was like I was like, dude, I can't. I got to go. And so yeah. I couldn't the customer service was so good that I couldn't even get him get his attention. So I thought that was actually a, a great, you know, a, a great testament yeah, to what what they what they were doing. It's a killer killer business model. Now in that one, it, it was so new he didn't have the Mini Cooper molds, right? And in, in my in many of the stores, we have uh, full size Mini Cooper molds coming out of the wall. It's fiberglass, mm. but we use that to for paint correction classes, but also for customers to try things out. Like you want to try a buffer, buff yeah. away, man. You want to try a product? Go ahead. So now you have the ability to try things before you buy, um, get technical expertise, because most of our guys that own the stores are either coming from the business or they took a, a very uh, vigorous training with our team. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a completely different model, man, uh, than shopping online. And it's really hitting hard. And I'm really and is excited. Is it primarily for detailers like, or is it is it like 50-50 consumer? How does how, what's your what's well, your demographic? Let's let's be honest. A lot of these products um, you know, are better suited uh for pros, but mm -hmm. a lot of the um the things that you go through the most, like tire shine, car soap, blah blah blah, those type of things. Yeah. Do it yourself for weekend warriors, regular people will come in and buy those things. Okay, but cool. Buffers and all that stuff. Unless they take one of our trainings, those are traditionally for the pros. Um, yeah. Even some of the ceramic coatings, you know, a lot of the, and I, I want my pros that are listening now to understand that detailing world is not hurting your business. All right. We're actually mm -hmm. growing the business because when people come in and they're looking at ceramics, they want it, right? It's like, I got to have that on my car, but uh, I don't know. That seems very involved and complicated. And so we have community boards in, in pretty much all of our locations where we hand out the business cards for these installers to then do those tougher things. But of course they're buying the products from us. So it's a win-win in that situation, but we're yeah. not like trying to get dethroned the pros by selling products that they shouldn't be using to consumers. That's right. not, that's not our goal. Um, yeah. But it, it has allowed us to increase the overall market of people looking at car care in a different aspect, right? Now they can see that, look, there's a store that is dedicated to this. Maybe I should start cleaning my car, you know? And so yeah. it's really helped the industry, I think. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, you know, one of my brands, the off-road brand, um, you know, yeah, one yeah, of the challenges. you too. That's awesome. Yeah. Bro. I mean, on one, that. one of the challenges of that brand though is like, well, why don't I just go to Walmart and get the, you know, this product that costs this much and lasts for two years, I can get for half that amount 
And right. oh, I for and what they don't realize is it lasts two weeks, right? But sure. like that whole that whole education component for for consumers to see there's a reason you pay a premium for premium products, right? Absolutely, so, yeah, yeah. That's got to be helping. And like you said, you put a buffer in somebody's hand that's never used one, they're going to be like, oh. I see why I'm not going to use this That's on my right, car. That's right, dude. That's what I'm saying. So, like, I had a guy the other day who's like, yeah, I'm lo really looking at uh, doing GMOs. I watched a YouTube video, and I'm pretty sure I can do it myself. I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. Let's talk about this. So, first off, you got a buffer. And he's like, well, I haven't really got into that yet. And I'm like, so you're just going to code over the scratches? And he's like, no, I don't think I want to do that. And I'm like, well, then you're going to need a buffer. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right. Well, and so then right there, I could see his brain change. And he's like, well you have someone that might be able to do this locally and that's what i'm saying like it it, it i'm selling the service in in like an indirect way right so yeah it's really helping the overall industry man you know we're onboarding people as well we're qualifying and training people so that way you know you don't have uh, some dickhead opening up in your backyard that doesn't know what he's doing and trying to take your business you know yeah like we're educating these guys so it's like a level playing field um, well, and just the interest, it, interest in detailing, you know, detailing world, right? It's a big mm -hmm. sign, purple and blue and all the, all those, like it's, the branding's great. Um, you have great presence. And I think it's just, it's one of those things that draws attention. It's like back to the CP, you know, setting yeah. stuff on fire, right? For like, sure. Customers need to see that. I'm super impressed with your ability to have taken that where it's gone and, uh, mm -hmm. and to continue to stair step over time. Cause how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 43, dude, I'll be okay. 44 in February. So well, I think we're maybe you're I'm, a little, I, I'm, yeah. I'll be 52 in December. So, um, That's awesome, I got, bro. I got a That's few, awesome. I got a few years on you, but you know what I, for people that are listening, especially, you know, whether you're my age, Matt's age, or in your twenties to realize that what Matt is, has done. And, you know, myself in, in some ways also is continue to build over time to look for opportunities, see where the changes are, see what things I can do, deal with quote unquote failures mm -hmm. along the way. Right. And then oh, figure gonna. out a way, a way yeah. around those. Yeah. You know, you're going to do I want you to expound on that ex and expand on that a little bit. Like, what is it about you? Um, Cause I, you know, the first time I met you and every time I've talked to you, I have this same sense, you and I are pretty much cut from the same cloth and, you know, we kind of have that same, that same mentality. Can you describe like what it is about you that helps drive you um, like towards this? Was it, you know, you said just like with the drums, right? It, you weren't born with it. You had to learn how to do it. Is it with sales, networking, looking for opportunities, investing, all of those things? Do you think there are certain traits that you were born with or did you learn those things and what are they? So without sounding shallow, I would say it has a lot to do with pride. Mm. Here's why. You have an idea, right? The minute you put it into play, there's no turning back. You mm -hmm. can be a failure or you can just keep busting your ass until it works. And so what I do is I just go head first into these opportunities with a little bit of fear, but more so like, again, the pride is like, I'm not going to let it fail. Um, mm -hmm. But I go head first in this opportunities and creating like such like right now, I got this big company and like people are like, do you realize what you've created? And I'm, and if I take a second to think about what I've done, I'm like, oh my God, like I get anxiety. Like, mm all these things moving in the background, like, and it's just me, right? It, it is just me at the top dictating, you know, okay, guys, this team member is going to do this. This team member is going to do that. But it all relies on the pride of, of, of success. Like I don't want to mm -hmm. be a failure. Right. Right. And so that maybe was instilled when I was younger, you know, playing sports when I was young, trying to, you know, win tournaments and whatever it is, I was always very competitive. And so I think that, um, my drive is based on just succeeding and being pride, uh, prideful, uh, in that, not in a, a narcissistic pompous type of way, because mm -hmm. it's internal. I don't, I'm not online saying I'm, I'm doing all this and I'm an em creating this empire. Like I'll, I'll promote like, Hey, we got a new store opening. Cool. But like, I'm not sitting there, you know, trying to be like this guru, right? That's not who right. I am. Yeah. My mine's an internal battle. Right. And call it ADHD too. I think there's a lot, a lot of that in there too. <laughs> I always got to be doing something. And, um, yeah. Sounds so, familiar. 
Yeah, right. And that's a good problem to have as long as you can harness it. You got to be able to turn off. And, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. glad you when we were getting into uh, doing this interview, you had mentioned about talking about fitness and some other stuff, too, which I think is the rest of the pie. Right. Like my right. life is not just based on going to work every day, even though it feels mm -hmm. like that sometimes um, yeah. there are other things that keep me going. Right. You got to mm -hmm. stay healthy. And I'm talking about brain health, too, man. Like for me, dude, God is the number one thing in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I read the Bible every single night. I pray every single night. I pray all throughout the day. That's my purpose. And then I build mm -hmm. on that. Right. Um, but you got to have other things in your life that can allow you to vent out some of that negativity, those failures that you, you mentioned. Working out, that's a huge one, man. You know, if mm -hmm. I'm having a bad day, I go to the gym and get it in. I feel much better afterwards, you know, um, but you got to vent that stuff. So, yeah. And having that, you know, mindset, uh, you know, I, I want to get your address after we're drawing. I want to send you a, a, a book um, because I bought a bunch of them. We had him on the podcast. His name is Marcus Collius. Okay. Um, he wrote a book called Play a Bigger Game, which is, which is, you know, he's my personal coach. Like he's my business coach, cool. my life coach, and a really, right and a really good friend of mine. But he talks about mindset as the basis for that. And he also, he's All a, that. he's a Christian. So he talks mm -hmm. about that in that context, being a person of faith. Um, but it all comes from that mindset, right? Like you've had your fair share of negativity towards you. We all, we all have, but if you absorb that and let it eat you up and you go after people as a result of it, that doesn't serve anything. Like that's not going to serve. Can I purpose. say this, all the negativity. So there's a lot of people on here that probably never, like they've heard of Matt Kelly, maybe in a negative connotation or a positive connotation doesn't really matter, but negative situations are usually because they just, they don't know me. Right. And so mm -hmm. they heard a wives tale from a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, but it's never right. really the truth. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you let those things, like you said, attack you, it's like a cancer, man. And it's like, mm -hmm. you're worrying what other people think about you. And so my, my, my biggest piece of advice on this podcast would be stay the hell off of social media. Yep. Use it for business and get the hell out. Because there is a lot of angry and weird people on there that will just try to destroy you because they feel bad about themselves. And they're really mad that like a person like you is doing better than them because they feel mm -hmm. that they're better than you. And so that's where a lot of that negativity comes from. But because I don't get sucked into that, I just focus on my day to day with the people that I deal with, mm -hmm. you know, and even some of the people that, that uh, are out there that other people think I'm not getting along with, we are getting along behind the scenes yeah, yeah. we just haven't so barry and i for example we did a big photo a photo i saw that other... photo i saw that photo yeah we just did it because it was like you know people don't understand that we've been cool for the past however long you know of course friends have falling outs dude and yeah. you know we both agreed that yeah well, we're you guys both... were business partners and went through that whole thing right yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah so you know any like alpha is gonna have a little bit of ego that's who we are but at the end of the mm -hmm. day it's like we're, we were friends first. And so we yeah. finally stood outside of that and said, you know what? It's been too long, man. Like we need to mm -hmm. go back to that. And now him and I are actually going to be doing some business together. So nice. Uh, we, the only reason I posted that photo was so that the rest of the world would know that we're cool. <laughs> that was it because now it opened doors for me and it opened doors for him. So my fans will now do business with him and his fans will now do business with me. Right. Yeah. Because people are so loyal. It's crazy, dude. Um, well, people but, yeah. create these scenarios that, that don't exist, right? Like this isn't Correct. MMA, this isn't boxing, like, yeah. you know, like we're, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're not, and I always joke, I say, we're not curing cancer with this detailing stuff, right? Like no. it's not that, it's not that serious where right. I think so many people make that so serious to your point about social media. I, I got a side story about that. So sure. from that book, what he, one of the challenges was get off social media for at least 48 hours completely. Right. Yeah. And see what it does. So the, the Thursday, so I did that on a Friday. So the, the Thursday before I'm trying to read this book, right. And my ADHD is just going like, I'm getting a paragraph at a time. Then I want to check my phone, you know, getting a notification, all this stuff. So I bought this app called refocus, which basically turns okay. off all social media and nice. anything you want off your phone. Sure. So I haven't had social media on this phone working for now awesome. uh, eight, nine days. But after it was crazy, after those 48 hours, I sat down and like, I could easily read like 25 pages with, without even looking up, which is primarily what I would do normally. 
right? So I, yeah. I'm re I'm actually rewiring my brain to not need that constant dopamine hit. That's exactly um, what it is, bro. And yeah. it, and it's funny because I, what I do is I can only use it on my desktop, and I go in so I can hit my notifications for my for my business pages, right? So mm -hmm. I just hit that, but I happen to see a post by someone, and it like sucked the life out of me because it was mm -hmm. just some negativity thing, and so I'm changing my process with that. But that's awesome. I would. I echo exactly what you're saying. Social media is such a is such a cancer, especially for whatever reason this industry has continued to get worse. You know, we're you know, I've been in the industry since like 2012 as far as like a public facing thing. Um and so we're kind of in that same you know, we we're, we're in that same generation of people, yeah. Barry and all those guys. Yeah. It's changed a lot since Oh, then, for sure, man. That, you know, I don't think we had the vitriol and the, well, you know, here's why all that stuff Kev, at that point. I think it's outside influence. Our economy is in the shitter right now. People are fighting for dollars because mm -hmm. their dollar doesn't go the same distance. So they got to make more of it. And there's more people out there doing it. So now you're just getting angry because people are taking food out of your mouth. And that's the re reality of it. Like that's the, the core problem, right? It's, it's animalistic. You know, why do mm -hmm. dogs bite another dog that tries to get its food? So that's really what we're facing, man. It's mm -hmm. tribal. It is absolutely tribal. And so, you know, that's, this is why for me, it's like, I've always been the trendsetter. I don't want to get into the market at the top. I mm -hmm. want to get in at the bottom and then get out at the top. And that's what yeah. I've done, you know, with coatings. And then now I'm doing retail stores and all this stuff, but I haven't had to compete because I'm doing shit before other people have done it. And yeah. for me, that's like the smartest strategy. So yeah. like if you if you see a hole in the industry that you love, right? Figure out a way to fix that. Fix that that situation. Maybe you're going to speed up a process or you're going to create something that that helps someone do something better. People like that are the ones that are going to really succeed, you know? Um yeah. and so that this is kind of where where my mentality is. It's like I don't I don't want to uh get into something after everyone else already has. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, I mean, um, it's the same yeah. thing with crypto that you did there. It's the same, same thing with stocks, thing, right? You, with yep. stocks, you buy low, sell high, which everybody else buys low and or buys high and sells when the yeah, when it's taking dropping their out, money. Right? That's the thing. Like you're taking the guys that got in late's money. That's how yeah. crypto and everything works. But yeah, I mean, I had a conversation with a guy. We were talking about real estate, and I've done some real estate investing. You probably know, but um, you know, I wish I could go back to 2009 and throw a million dollars at real estate, right? Like yeah, all right, the guys dude. that bought oh, real estate in 2009, like they're Loaded. multimillionaires now. And so for like, sure. if you look for those opportunities to, to do what you're saying, then, then, then that's, um, that's great. So give me a couple pieces of advice for, for the, mm -hmm. in, what do you, give me the state of the industry. What I, I like to ask this of guys that have been in the industry for a while. What, where do you think we are as a detailing industry right now? And PPF and tent and flat glass and all these other things, right? I think at this, let's just talk about this year. I think that we're going sideways. We're not creating anything new. We're not retract. We're, we're literally just going sideways until mm -hmm. someone creates something new. And so I kind of like those times because they're a little relaxing. Like you don't have mm -hmm. to be ahead of the times and, and, and out there researching new stuff. And you're just doing day-to-day -day stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You got to find a way to do it better, though, you know, because like you, it's it, there's vitriol um, and it's because it, there's saturation in, in our industry. And so you have to figure out how you can stand out from the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like really what the main the, the, the whole purpose of this market has been forgotten. Right. And that is you're doing a service for someone. Right. And back in the old days when your grandpa was trying to sell his mechanic services, you know, he was going to the marketplace, he was meeting people, it was face to face, right? And we've lost a lot of that with this, um, this technology, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we're having to, it also allows for people to do the whole fake it till you make it thing. Like you can look like a, right. a million bucks on Facebook, and then they, they show up and they're like, Oh, God, what did I just <laughs> sign up for? Yeah, you can rent so, planes, you can rent Bentleys, you can rent all of that shit. stuff and take pictures, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of that out there. And I think we just need to go back to the basics, you know, get out and, and do car shows. If, if you're a detailer, I'm talking to the detailers right now. 
If yeah. you're a detailer, go out to the car shows, meet real people, make friends. Because once they become friends, it's no longer you selling them, right? Mm -hmm. You're actually kind of just helping them out. For example, like I have a friend who's a barber. I also have a friend that owns a bar. And when I have friends that come in town, I'm like, hey, go, go check out my friend who owns the bar, right? I do that for yeah. two reasons. The first reason is that I want brownie points from my friend at the bar that owns it. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, Matt Kelly, right. Matt sending me all these people, man. God bless you. Here's some free drinks, right? I'm trying yeah. to earn some brownie points. But on the other hand, I'm trying to make the friend that's in from out of town feel, feel like a VIP because now mm -hmm. he can go into this establishment that he's never been to and say, hey, my buddy told me to come in talking to the owner, right? And now mm -hmm. you know the owner of this establishment. And so like you make someone kind of feel like a king. And so mm -hmm. when I go out um, to car shows and I'm trying to build business, even if I don't love the guy's car, let's say it's a Camaro new body because I love the 69s and stuff. But yeah, let's say yeah. it's like a new body, right? Maybe it's like uh, some of these guys are like decking these things out like their favorite football team, like yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's yellow and black and the interior is yellow and black and they got Pittsburgh Steelers stickers all over it. To me, I can't stand that. But to them, that's like their pride and joy. Mm -hmm. So when I go out to, to car shows, if I want to capture that customer, I'm going to go up and be like, dude, I love this car. Like, this is the coolest car I've ever seen, right? So now you immediately, he drops the barrier because you're talking about something that he loves, right? In a good way. Mm -hmm. And so now that whole barrier comes down where you're no longer trying to sell him, right? You're, you're kind of floating his ego. And then I'll lead into like, you know, who's maintaining it for you, right? And then that opens up the, the story for me to kind of allow him to work with me on this project, right? His car. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's all about basics, man. Get out there and do that stuff. You know, no amount of Facebook campaigns are going to help you if you don't have that basis identity. You know, if you don't mm -hmm. have those Google reviews, if you don't, people don't know who you are. No one's going yeah. to a barber by going in Google, right? Would you ever go get your hair cut from someone that you never met in your life? Probably Question, not. Kevin. <laughs> Right. Yeah, if you're out of town not. and you're like, God, I really need a haircut. Would you just show up and be like, Hey, can you cut my hair? No, you go look at the reviews. You know, I want to look at how cool the barbershop is. Yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah. We're talking about our hair here, dude. So like same thing with your car, that's people's pride and joy. So like you better have good reviews. You better have testimonials. You better have the word of mouth. Like these are things that, that kind of allow people to do business with you when it's the first time, right? They, they have to have that yeah. reference. Um, and yeah. I, I feel like a lot of people have forgotten that, you know, they're just throwing money at Facebook, hoping that they're going to get a ton of leads, which usually don't pan out because the trust factor, right? Yeah. Um, well, I think people yeah. forget there's an emotional component to sales, right? Like that's, yeah. and you, you just highlighted that. And what do people like to talk about most themselves, sure. right? Like, or their cars or the things yeah. that they've worked for or all of that. And so that emotional component People make decisions, they make buying decisions on emotion for the most I know. part. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think to your point, if we're not tying into that, and I always talk about, you know, it's sales is just solving someone's pain. Exactly know, right, or, man. Or, or stroking their ego. You know, you got to listen is. to, to yeah, figure you gotta, out what you those pains are. You got to ask and you got to listen, right? Yep. Yeah. You're a detective for sure. Yeah, I agree with you solely, man. Um, a lot of people do a lot of talking and not enough listening. And, yeah. um, but yeah, that, that would be some of my advice. I mean, if we're talking about work related stuff, um, yeah. other advice, dude, get your relationship with God, man. I don't want to sound like a preacher on here, but you know, coming from a rock bottom, you know, status in life, that's the mm -hmm. only thing that like clears you and, and just puts you in a positive state. It really does. And you will see blessings, uh, but you got to do the right things, man. Yeah. Um, I saw, also, I saw your post, I saw your post this oh, morning. Today? That was, that was, yeah, that was a pretty good one. I like that one. It's true, man. Cause I'm, I'm thinking, and I'm guilty of these. A, a lot of the times when I post it's, it's, I'm talking to myself, mm -hmm. I'm telling myself like, you know, God doesn't work for you, man. Like <laughs> you work for him. So don't sit there and, and ask him for, Oh, please give, let me be successful this year. And you're not doing what you got to do for him. Right. Like he, yeah. he doesn't work for you. Um, yeah. And then people My, get upset at him because he doesn't answer their prayers. Crazy. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the answer is no. Right. My, yeah. my wife taught a Sunday school lesson, lesson once for little kids. It said, you know, God is not your vending machine. 
That's correct, and, bro. Uh, you know, it's That's because so I think we, I think we treat it that way. Treat it no, that we way think a he's lot. a genie in the bottle. It's like, hey, I need <laughs> yeah. this right rub, now. Rub the lamp, Please. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. It, you're so small compared to him, even though he loves us all. It's still like you, you can't be acting like that. But yeah, um, I think that was a big part of of my transformation. You know, mm-hmm. um, not womanizing, not going out and partying, and and doing all this disgusting behavior because then you don't have any real protections, man. And and the world, if you ever like kind of just are going through life and I'm talking to other people, if you're going through life right now and you feel like no matter what you do isn't working, no matter how great of an idea it it is, it's just, it always fails. Um, look at your lifestyle, bro. Change, mm-hmm. change some things about yourself, pray to God, get better. And, and I'm sure that he will, he will help you where, where necessary. But I think that was my biggest problem, man. Just being a, yeah. a shithead. For so and long. How long? How long ago was that trans? Was that transformation? Well, I, how long? I've did been there... a Bible student for probably about ten years now. Um, mm. I got rebaptized uh, back in 2010. It was the best thing I ever did, man. And nice. you know, I'm not I'm not a preacher by any means, but I just I see it, you know, firsthand. Mm-hmm. You can't see God's hand and then and dispute it, right? Like I, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Um, whether it's through success or just saving me in certain bad situations that I got myself into, but it's <laughs> real. It's always, it's always situations we get ourselves into. Yeah, right? dude, we're imperfect, man. We make bad decisions. That's what we do. But uh, hey, I want yeah, to, before, you know, before we, I love that. And well, you, I mean, go, you, I'm making a shameless plug. So oh, well, uh, I'm going to let you plug. I was going to ask you about your, your no, weird this ve- is veganism first. stuff. Oh so yeah. Go let's ahead. get into that real quick too. <laughs> And I, I, la- I laugh that you say weird because I'm about to, to teach you some stuff. But the fir- this is like a, a first here for Detailers Roadmap. Um, we're, I've been, I haven't even launched this on Facebook yet, so you're the very first person. Awesome. But we, we officially, uh, Hydra Silex, um, my non-compete from Ceramic Pro is done. And so I've had this product in my back pocket for so long, and I haven't been able to launch it. And it is officially coming to a neighborhood near you. So Rome. this is, uh, well, there's two of them. So this is Hydra Silex um, with their professional grade ceramic coating, which nice. comes with a reinsurance warranty. Um, but this formula, dude, it ain't nothing like on the market right now. Um, you know, I've, I've used them all. I've been around for so long and I know all the nuances and all this other stuff. And I made sure that this one is not only easy to use, but it is super powerful with just one coat. You don't have to worry about stacking it and doing all this weird stuff. And then it comes with uh, a warranty too, that um, a reinsurance warranty, an actual warranty um, that, you know, will pay you money if there's a problem. Uh, But this is something that we put together and we're launching it. Um, It's going to be allowing us to open up certifications in our store to teach people how to do ceramics that are professional. So you do a national network and all that stuff. Yeah, but we're not going to do the crazy territories and, you know, yeah. all the hoops you got to jump through, man. Just, it's like, just to learn how to use it so that you're qualified for the insurance, right? Yeah, Basically. man. It, yeah. It's it's a great product for the veterans, but it's also a great product for the guys that are just getting into the industry that want something mm-hmm. easy uh, that maybe don't have two years of business experience. You know, it, yeah. it, it used to be about the brand, but now it's about the detailer. You know, customers yeah. are booking with you because they trust you, right? So I'm just right. giving you a great product. There'll still be great marketing and stuff to help help these uh you know shops and stuff sell the product, but um, that's something we're launching, man. I'm I'm super proud of this one. Hydra Silex is absolutely my my baby. Like it, mm. I don't talk about it enough, but every single one of those products is solid, man. And it's because I've I've seen what's out there. I take the best of each category, so the best wheel cleaner, the best this and that, and made sure that our product could destroy or at least be comparable to those things. Right, and um. You know, that's where we're at with it. So that's, that's awesome. Man. Congra- real soon. Congra- Can't congrats wait. on that. Yeah. I'll, uh, Thanks, like bro. I said, this, when are you launching it next week after we're recording this a couple of weeks? Yeah. So we're, we're, we're about two weeks out into the official national launch and, uh, okay. you'll find it at detailing world and then on hydrosilex.com and hydrosilex I've allowed to be exclusive to detailing world because it's such a sick brand, but I want, Hey, I want to be able to control the price. Yeah. Um, I don't want people out there doing weird shit on Amazon and stuff like that. Yeah, um, but also we can talk to you about it and teach you how to use it, so you can't yeah. get that online. But and so just pro only, no like no prosumer or anything like that. Well, it can be prosumer; it's just not going to come with a warranty at that point, right? Right? Yeah, like you won't, I get it. 
you're only insured and warrantied if you've been certified. And that we have okay. to do that. That's the insurance company yeah. requires that. But Carfax, yeah, they won't under, you know, they won't they won't underwrite some dude just you know doing his eighty four Civic, right? Like that's no that's for, not sure, for sure for <laughs> sure. But Carfax yeah. report, you know, all all the things that the bells and whistles that you need to compete with all the other brands. Um, so yeah. But yeah, that's coming soon, dude. Sorry about that plug, but I had to get it out there because no, I literally love it. Came I love the, it. They came in the mail today, literally today. Really? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I love that, man. I'm glad. I'm glad to you see put that out there. And like you said, it's not about. And I've been bemoaning this for a decade, which is stop. Co- I did a video back in like 2014 or something where I said stop co-branding your business. Right. Like yeah, stop making scary about, if you do that, dude. Yeah. You know, stop yeah. making, you know, if, if someone else's brand is more important than your brand, mm-hmm. you've got a problem. Like you can yeah. include other brands, but to your point, if it's a great product and customers want it, the price points there, the margins there, performance is there, then that's awesome. Like, right. That's, that's what that's it's all the about, man. Um, but yeah, like you said, yeah. tying into a company, um, if they make changes, you got to roll with it and there's nothing you can yeah. do. You know, like if they change their formula and you're contracted in to sell that exclusively, hopefully it works because a lot of times <laughs> it doesn't. And then you have to deal with the problem on the back end. So yep. I'm speaking yep. from experience, but yeah, it's yeah, really I'm cool sh- bottles too, man. Like Chrome. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Those are, are they, are they black? Uh, they're like matte, matte black, black with, with, the label with on a, a chrome metallic uh, finish. So nice. And they're, yeah, very that's unique. awesome. Those, yeah. those are great. Hey, you want to, um, obviously veganism. health and fitness, yeah, veganism, health and fitness. And I yeah. say weird because like I said, on oh, my message, you the don't other know day, the unknown is weird. For no, sure. because I'm way too lazy to be vegan. First mm. of all, I do like meat. I grew up in a ranching family, sure. so it's kind yeah. of, it's, Montana, it's right? part of, part of, yeah. Well, I grew up in Oklahoma, but I live in Montana. Oh, right. Um, but like, you know, I don't think people realize how hard it is to be a vegan. Honestly. It's easy as shit. Sorry. If, can we curse on here? I did it like five times <laughs> you, already. You already did. You're good. I'm sorry. Um, It is easy. It is so easy because I was the meat and cheese guy. There's been times yep. where I had to like remind myself like, hey, it's been a week and you haven't had any vegetables <laughs> except for French fries. I don't think those count. No, right. And it got to the point where like I was having heart issues, man, uh, mm. at a young age too. It was like in my... I've been vegan now for two years. So like my early forties, I started having heart problems, like real problems, man. Like at night, I'm just like praying, like, please don't let me die tonight. Like it was real. And so wow. I was watching, I was on Netflix and I watched this uh, show documentary documentary called the game changers. And it was actually produced and directed by um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jackie Chan, right. Who are wow action stars. Did you know, Arnie is now vegan. He's been vegan for quite a long time. And that guy was literally drinking dozens of eggs and eating raw oh, yeah. steak. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So his heart was just destroyed. You know, our body can handle animal you know, proteins and stuff like that to a certain degree, to about 80% uh, veggies, 20% meat. And no one is really living that way. And so I was like, you know what? I want to try something different. I obviously know it's my diet. I'm mixed with the stress of, of being a business owner. And so I saw the show and I saw the performance. Like it's not, I'm not crazy, dude. Like I, I, I live off of results. And mm-hmm. so I saw the performance, right? And there is one of these MMA fighters who, you know, at, at his gym, they have the, the rope thing where you go like this, right? Yeah. Battle ropes. Battle ropes. I knew it. I couldn't think of it. And so they had like a, like records on the wall of how long someone could go. Right. And he had the record set as a meat eater. And so then he did, uh, became vegan simply because his dad was dying of cancer and he was doing this documentary and he just went full vegan. Mm. And after like uh, six months in, he went back and did these ropes, dude. And this is all film. Like it's not edited or anything like that, but he went literally for an hour, an hour, dude, on the ropes, Jeez. a fucking hour. <laughs> and he was like, I never would have been able to do that because he just, he wasn't getting tired. His energy levels mm-hmm. were up. Um, Conor McGregor was in the movie and he talked about how he became vegan uh, at a point in his life because he got his ass kicked by Nate Diaz, who's vegan. <laughs> Didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah. So there's a lot of like, you know, under the radar vegans, because let's be honest, the market, the food department, you know, the FDA and all this stuff, the USDA, they're all 
ran by people making money, man. And so mm-hmm. they, they've done these slander campaigns saying, if you don't eat meat, you're a pussy. Or like, you know, the Whopper <laughs> commercials, like eat more yeah. meat. You're a man if you eat more meat. And so all it's doing is creating heart problems for, <laughs> for men, dude. And so the minute I became vegan, that all changed. Like I felt different after I eat a meal. Like I'm absolutely like still energized. Like food is supposed to be fuel, mm-hmm. not a sleeping pill. And there was many yeah. years where I would eat and I'm like, I'm going to bed, guys. Like, I'm done for the day. At two o'clock, you're just like, I got to go to bed. Yeah. I don't feel that anymore, dude. I don't feel that. And so back to your point that, you know, it's it's hard to be vegan. It's really not, man. Once you get into that rhythm, it's yeah, so once easy. You, and, and let me clarify. The reason yeah. it's hard is because it's not just, hey, let me go eat salads all the time. No, it's like not that. You, I don't eat you ha- I don't eat salads at all. Yeah, but I mean, like, me. you know, a lot of people misunderstand that it being vegan means a certain thing. But being in order to be a healthy vegan, you have to combine your proteins. You need protein. Anim, animal proteins are complete. Vegetable proteins are incomplete. So you have to combine. Mm. Well, you have to combine them, right? No, you don't. So let's talk about this. Animals. A gorilla. What does a gorilla eat? Uh, vegetables. <laughs> yeah. And the same, the same ones. Could you go in the ring with a gorilla? That thing will tear your arms off. Yeah, right? true. Where does that muscle yeah. come from? Plants. That's true. Plant yeah. protein. Um, the world's strongest man. You can fact check me on this. The world's strongest man is vegan. He mm. lifts up like 2,000 tons. I think it was 2000 and, and like carry 2000 tons straight vegan uh, rhinoceroses, hippopotamus, they're all <laughs> vegan, dude. So yeah. like you have to look at these things. And, um, again, it, I think really what it comes down to is, is the fear is that we don't know how to transition into that. We don't know what yeah. to eat. We don't know. Maybe some guys don't know how to cook. So they're, they're throwing a hot pocket in the, in the microwave, you know, because mm-hmm. they just don't know how to cook. There are processed vegan things for that situation. I would recommend not. That's not true veganism because you could potentially get lab meats. You could get bioengineered stuff if you're doing anything processed for that matter. Yeah. Which, by the way, read your labels, man. I was in the grocery store the other day and I I really got into reading my labels. There's like eight out of 10 products that are bioengineered food. And now they have to tell you on the back. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. And that's one of the that's one of the health advantages of going vegan is that if you Eating do it correctly, foods. you eat whole foods. You don't right. eat processed foods, which right. I eat I you know, I like I said I'm not a vegan. Mm-hmm. I eat cleanly. Like I don't eat crap food. I don't eat processed food very you know, very very uh sparingly and all that. Like so, mm-hmm. you know, even if you don't go vegan, Take his advice more and read your labels dude. and eat more vegetables and, vegetables. Get, and stop eating processed foods. Yes. And your vitamins come from veggies, dude. Mm-hmm. And when they're digested from an animal, you're not getting the same amount. Like, yeah. it's, it's really downgraded. So if you're going to be a meat eater, I got no problem with that. Like, I'm not the vegan that's like, oh, you're, <laughs> you know, you got to be vegan or you're not my friend. Yeah. Um, it's just that you need to do it right and, and just eat more vegetables at least. If you're going to eat yeah. meat, cool. Eat vegetables. Yeah. And if you can cut out dairy, you're way better off, dude. Dairy is, yeah. is one of the worst things. One of the yeah. worst things. And, dude, I love cheese. I love it. <laughs> but the vegan cheese is just as good these days. And so – and it's healthy. Yeah, it's I, I will processed. say that the products – you know, and have obviously changed. you have to be careful because there are some processes, right? You know, sure. so you have to kind of like, you know, you know, limit the amount of that versus your whole foods. And, and there all that. should be but, five ingredients at max in what you're eating. Yeah. And you should be able to pronounce and understand what they are. Right. <laughs> That's the other thing. So, I like that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. ultimately, the point is that Matt's a healthy guy. He works out. He eats right, which helps him to be a higher performer. Yeah. you know, better in business, better mentality, all of those things. Right. So if you, if you ignore all the conversation about being a vegan and just take away that if you're not in a healthy state, you need to work on getting in a healthy state. Yeah. Change work something. Out more, don't do better. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, don't, you don't have to change everything at once. Pick one thing. Correct. Eat, eat, eat more, uh, eat more vegetables. But 100%. That's, that's the way <laughs> if you can take anything out of this podcast today, eat more. <laughs> vegetables you'll be successful i love it hey man if people want to reach out to you and learn more about you or find you know information about hydrosilex and detailing world and all that where where do we go 
Um, so you can shoot me an email at matt, M-A-T-T, at detailtheworld.com. That's my direct, and I'm, I'm open, man. I don't, I'm not a snobby type of guy. You hit me up when I get the chance, I will absolutely reply to everyone. Um, or you can, you know, follow our Facebook pages, Detailing World, etc. I'm on Facebook too, Matthew Kelly, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, K-E-L-L-Y. Um, you know, just follow me on the regular places. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out though. I am absolutely a very down to earth, open type of dude. I've mentored a lot of people and I don't charge you anything either. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's where you can find me. Dude, I really appreciate this. You know, like I said, when we started, we've been friends for a long time. I I wanted, I wanted to have you on just to learn more from you and let people, you know, kind of learn about you. Cause I think Mm -hmm. that that's like you said, you know, whether it's me or you or anybody else that's had kind of a higher profile, you know, part of the industry, it's always good to see the backside, right? The, yeah, the, yeah, to yeah. get the backstory and kind of see what the real truth is and, and all that. Dude, so most that's... of us are just regular people like all of you out there. Um, <laughs> we just maybe figured out a different way of doing things. So yeah, learn from our mistakes. Right? Yes, for sure. That's the main thing. Yeah, I got a ton of them. So, hey, man, I appreciate you. <laughs> awesome. And uh, I, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll look forward to that coding for sure. Yeah, brother. Appreciate you. Kevin, great right, to man. see you, man. All yeah, right. you too. All, All right. right. Head over to detailersroadmap.com and get your one-stop success solution today.